I, I just want to start out today. I want to I want to just lead out. Usually it takes a couple minutes for everybody to get here. I want to tell you about our experience down at NAR, uh, the NAR conference in Anaheim, California. We had a booth and uh, but I've actually got a picture of it here on my phone. And uh, before we went down there, there were a lot of comments that we heard from people about, you know, is NAR even a thing with the lawsuits and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is this a, you know, are they even going to be able to do, do anything down at NAR? Um, those of you that were, we actually did our meet, podcast from NAR last week, our, our webinar, and uh, we had William Grader there with us. But we did something kind of interesting. We This is, a, see if I can get my face out of there. There's our, our little booth. We had a little sign there in the background. And then there's William Grader. Uh, in the blue shirt talking to a lady and I'm talking to another lady that's wearing an orange shirt and we did a podcast and we we met at the, the podcast gave us an opportunity to meet with a lot of people um, that we otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet with so we got to meet with our neighbor who um, who's the vice president of sales for Chime the company formerly known as Chime, now known as Lofty. Um, we also got to meet the uh, the lady in charge of sales for Matterport, and we, she's we're going to have a podcast episode with her. Uh, Shannon is her name, and uh, and we just generally got to meet with a lot of great folks there. There was a lot of energy. Some people had this idea like the whole real estate market's just caving in and, and collapsing and stuff. And I, I guess, aside from this transaction you're describing to us, uh, Jeff, we, I, I, think, uh, I think generally we, we felt like the market looked pretty healthy. There was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy. So it's going gangbusters. It's slower than normal, but it's people still buying and selling and we're still getting commissions and sellers are still happy to pay buyer commissions it's there's no ambiguity about it there's a contract that they sign at a listing and you as long as you explain it correctly your part of this is going to the buyer and it, you even have to sign on it there's no problem the lawsuit yeah. is that lawyer the main lawyer on the first one he's going to get about 700 700 million dollars so you know where the priorities are yeah, well, I mean, I would do some crazy stuff for seven hundred million dollars myself. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think we're gonna get rolling here and get dived in. Uh, Mina, thank you for joining us today. Welcome, Mina's a new person that I've been in touch with on Facebook, and then we have Vadim, who's one of our developers, and we're gonna start out with Vadim and get him to share kind of some stuff that he's been working on. Let me just set up so we can sh share screens. And I guess you're live, Bobby. It's yours. You got the floor. Okay, thank you. Well, who doesn't know me? I'm, my name is Vadim. I'm developer at Reality Candy. And I have a video I want to share with you. We have two features. So let me share the screen. Let me know if you can hear the audio. In this video, I want to show you two small but important features. Is it working? It's quiet, but we can hear it. Okay. We implemented recently for a Go High Level dashboard. So uh, here on the screen, you can see it's admin dashboard. Uh, the first feature is white label domain. Uh, some users are uh, using that white label domain. And we had a hard time to determine, like distinguish the domain you're using. So we decided to uh, put that settings on IDX Addams app. For that, you have to go to IDX Addams here. So here you can see 
a field named white label domain. So it's already said we use an app leader CRM.com here. For example, if I go back to dashboard and try to email somebody, it's gonna open white label domain. In our case, it's app.leaderscrm.com. Okay, the page is open and here we can SMS or email somebody, but we're not gonna do it right now. So let's just close the window. If you didn't set up your white label domain here on the IDX add-ons yet, you may encounter those uh, types of errors. Let's uh, just remove the white label domain here and, and I'm gonna show you. Okay, white label successfully updated. Let's refresh the page. And let's try to email. And when you try to email somebody, it's going to open just go high level domain, like default domain, go high level.com. So to avoid those types, types of errors, you have to set your white label domain here. Let's do it again. And click save. Okay, let's refresh the page again. Try to email. Okay, it, it opened the iframe. It's our leader CRM right now, so it's working. Now we can close the window. Okay, the next one, you can see your well, you can see leads, uh, uh, lead safe searches, safe properties right on the dashboard. For that, uh, you can see the card here and the label Ines Jacobs. If you click here, it's gonna open the iframe with the with some information. Uh, here we have email, phone when it's sign up. Also IDX information, you can see IDX traffic, save searches, save properties, IDX nodes. So uh, this uh, lead probably doesn't have anything. Oh no, it has. So let's try it again. Let's check save searches. Uh, okay, save searches, save properties. Okay, uh, that lead has to save properties. So we can see it here. Also some IDX traffic. Okay, uh, so we can see the information here right on the dashboard. Also, it works for white level dashboard. So we can see uh, white label domain here. Also, everything working. Same properties. <laughs> also, you can do it on every tab you want. For example, listings views here. So, gonna open the iframe, new leads. Okay, working, that's it. Okay, thank you, Vadim. Okay, yeah, that's you added those two features, the one that we can add the white label domains in there, pretty easy. And the second one is that you can follow up on the, uh, on the, do some tracking of the IDX data. We're gonna be adding some more functionality in there as we go forward. So thank you, Vadim. Carlos, do you wanna show us what you've been working on? Yes, I want to show you uh, the progress with 
the integration with iPhone Finder and high level. For that, I'm going to share my screen. I hope you can see. Well, the first thing I want to show you is a, a website, a demo website we made for a showing how iPhone Finder and High Level is uh, works together. Here we have a, a template uh, that we want to offer to for clients, and also this is connected with High Level. These are High Level uh, uh, iPhone Finder components, and here we have also iPhone Finder widgets. So. This is uh, an, an iPhone Finder website that you can uh, replicate and offer to your clients. Um, why this is important and why we want to show you. Um, these are uh, websites created with uh, high-level uh, website builders, and these are very good-looking uh, websites, and they are very uh, good integra integrated with iPhone Finder. Also, this is using Omni MLS, and Omni MLS is uh, an MLS for uh, many countries, including Mexico and South America. I want to show you next uh, the new iPhone Finder and High Level app. This uh, you can find it in igxapps.com. Let me show you how to install this app. Uh, this uh, app will integrate high level and iPhone Finder, will send the leads to high level, and also you will have a dashboard to view your leads, view properties, searches, and save properties. To create a, to integrate this is very easy. You just need to log in in idxapp.com with a, a, if you want an account, you can ask a, for an account so you can test it. Click on create app. The, you need to connect high level in order to work. For that, you just simply click on continue with high level. If you are not logged in in high level, it will ask you to log in. And then you click the account you, you want. I'm going to select test real estate. I redirect back and this is connected. So I can click on save and it gives me the embed code and the instructions on how to install it. I just need to copy this code, go to my CSS on my control panel and paste it here. Then I click on save changes and I can go to my website and this is connected. So if I go to my dashboard here, I have already a uh, tested it before. That's why I have data here, but I'm going to uh, save a property. So I'm going to click here. I'm already logged in. Let me let me log out here. <coughs> in my property organizer, I'm going to log out just to show you how it works from zero. So I have here the the login pop up and the app. And here we have the save property and let's see if I uh, I receive here the login event. And also if I save a search, this is safe. And here is the save property with the property types, bathrooms and bedrooms. And here we have all the data and also how many new leads in the last uh, month. So this is our already uh, for you to test it. If you want uh, to test it, just uh, send us a message and we can install it for you. We just need a, a high level, uh, the high level access and uh, access to the control panel of your iPhone Finder account. The last thing I want to show you is um, here in 
IDX apps, we have a partner's uh, dashboard. And let me show you what is the updates that we have made. This is an ongoing project, so it's not finished yet, but I want to show you the progress. It's about API signups. Um, the idea is to be able to sign up an, an, an account in iPhone Finder without needing to go to iPhone Finder. So here we, we have all the data that we need. I'm going to fill this form. And I'm going to click on continue. Then I need to select the package. And as this is a custom form, we can uh, customize this form. If we don't want to show a specific uh, uh, products, just like the CRM, because we want to offer ours. And here we have the, the company details and we can select the MLS. So here we have a complete list. Uh, iPhone Finder provides this list for the developer partners. So we can uh, select our MLS and create a new account. So this is the progress and the projects that I wanted to show you. Thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, Carlos. How about you, Maida? Do you want to show us what you've been up to? Mm, sure. Okay, so... Here it is. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a new feature that we have in IDX Arons. And this is for IDX Broker. And these are the one-click websites for high level. So um, this is only like an overview, so you know what I'm talking about. But the idea is to generate a high-level website and adding IDX Broker uh, links and some IDX add-ons, uh, widgets and apps. So it's like there in minutes and you don't have to go back and forth um, and do the things manually. So you have a first place or somewhere to start. And we also provide a step-by-step -step tutorial. So I also recorded a video because if not, it was going to be a little bit long. And I'm going to be like telling you what's going on. It doesn't have audio, but um, I will be explaining. So here is the IDX Aron's uh, dashboard, and I'm uh, explaining how to go there. So you I, are- I don't think we're seeing that, Maida. We're not seeing that screen. I'm sorry. OK. Oh, yeah. Let me go again. OK, you're right. Desktop. OK. Can you, you see like, the video? Yes. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. I'm going to start again. <laughs> OK. So I'm telling here uh, how to um, go to these one-click um, websites for high level. And here you will find uh, like this page that I already showed. Uh, where you can go there and like check uh, the information and get the tutorial, but you need to click on the buy template button and it's going to take you to this Stripe form and you need to fill the form and pay <laughs> and then it's going to uh, redirect you to, well, it's going to show this successful uh, payment page. And it's also um, going to show or tell that uh, this information is going to be sent you to the email that you enter to the Stripe form. But in case you don't receive it, here you have like the information. We need high level access in case uh, you want us uh, to create or clone the website for you. We need a primary city from your MLS to secondary cities, IDX broker access, so we can check that everything is working correctly on the IDX side. And also to set up the IDX templates, we need a logo, your contact information, and any image that you want to add to the hero section. And you click on to this page. And it's going to start with this multi-step form that you need to fill. And so you have to click on Start Now. 
it's going to ask for some things. And these are the IDXRN apps or widgets that we are going to add to the one click website. So we recommend to add them all the OVNI search, the Google Map widget, uh, some AI communities. And you click on next. Here, you need to add your high level API key. So you go, you go to your high level account. You copy the API key, you paste it, you click on next, and it's going to um, get your high level forms. So you can select one of them. And then you click on next. Here you select a primary city, and this is going to be like the main, the main city that you cover. And two secondary cities. For the primary and secondary cities, we're going to generate these community pages and also insert some apps and well we are i'm going to show you later here we are creating these pages uh, and adding the widgets um, it's going to take uh, a couple of minutes but here i uh, speed up the video and then the data is sent to high level after that, uh, the page is going to be uh, reloaded. And here you can see that um, it's, it's going to show a template li link at the top that you can use to clone the website. And here you can see that all these uh, links and apps were created and are, are going to be added as custom values in your high level site. Mm -hmm. So um, here, here are the custom values created on high level. And now I'm going to clone the website. You need to log in to high level to be able to clone the website. You can't log in to your white label domain because if not, it's not going to work. So here I'm, I'm logging into high level. And then uh, now that I'm logging in, I'm able to open the template, the link to clone the template. And it's going to be something like this. There's going to be this add website button that you need to click. And you can select uh, a name for your website and the location where it's going to be cloned. Then you click on clone website. And it's going to clone the website on your sub account. Uh, sometimes it like this spinning icon glitches. So if this happens, uh, you can reload the page. And then after that, you will see that the website, the website was cloned correctly because now we have like three pages. And then you can see We'll go to the website and preview, preview it. And then you are going to see that it, it's already uh, containing, for example, this OVNI search, uh, some IDX broker widgets. It's going to create saved links for IDX broker with the selected, the primary and secondary cities and other IDX addons widgets um, that we provide in IDX addons. And here I'm opening like the IDX broker pages because they were added, um, we're getting the information from the custom values. And it's really it's really powerful because you don't need like to go and update it manually. You can you only need to update update the values in one place. Here are the community pages that were created. And what else? Well, here's the map widget. And it has a lot of uh, apps and features that we are adding. So it's, you have, I mean, you have a website in minutes. And uh, here's the plunk valuation. And all this can be like customized. I think that's all, yes. Thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to share, Maida? No, that's all. 
Okay. I appreciate you sharing that. This is this is a one click is something we've been working on for a while, and uh, it's it's a little bit of a work in progress. There's still some modifications that we're going to be making for it. We have another theme um, that we're already starting to put together on it. This uh, is going to be rolling out uh, for for IDX broker. This should be available starting next week, and for iHome Finder soon. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, I only have one thing that I want to show and then we'll dive into some Q&A here. Um, we got our app uh, approved in the uh, marketplace. So we're going to do some things with that inside of high level. So we'll be able to, uh, folks will be able to you know, if you go here to the marketplace and search, you know, real estate or you want a real estate app or I don't know, maybe I, I can't see what I'm searching for here. But, um, you know, if you're looking for something with MLS data, so uh, we got that if you type real estate, so it should make it a little bit easier to find. And um we're, we're excited about that. We're going to be adding some, some functionality to that um, over the next month or so also. So that's, that's pretty much what we have for today. Um, appreciate everybody joining us. Does, we're going to open this up for some questions and answers. So if anybody has a question they want to ask us or something, we'd, we'd love to, to field any questions. And since we've got some of our developers here and my wife, then uh, we know that we any question you answer will be able to get you an any question you ask will be able to get you an answer. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Johnny, also, do you guys have anything that that we can help out with? Jeff, let's see what you got. So my question is um, on the um, on the first video that we saw um, on the dashboard, the the yep. GHL IDX dashboard. If someone views a property, how soon until we get the notification? You know, that's a big thing for me. Um, how long does it take it to load in the dashboard? Is that what you're asking? Well, if someone is on the site and they, like, let's just say they sign up and they favorite a property, uh, how long do I, how long does it take for high level to receive that information so I can, you know, have it in a workflow to notify me? Okay. Vadim, how long does it take? Oh, it takes seconds. Okay, great. Like, like 100 seconds or like one or two seconds? Hmm. Up to 10 seconds. Oh, okay. no. And I was, I was hoping for like eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're okay. going to have to speed that up so that we can keep Jeff happy. But that's a great question. What, what else do you have for us, Jeff? Uh, that's it. Everything looks really great. I, I can't wait to try the, um, the, um, the last video, the, the, the one clicks, the one click. Yeah. That's going to, like we spoke before, that's going to save me so much time and make my customers happy. Oh, we hope so. Good question. Johnny's asking, how much is the iHome Finder integration? Well, um, our tool is free. Of course we get paid as everybody knows, we get compensated by the IDX vendors um, as folks use us as their developer partner. So it's, instead of saying free, we ought to say included, I think, but it's, there's no, we don't have any additional charge for that iHome Finder tool, uh, Johnny. There's, you can go to idxapps.com and it's available for folks. If you don't use us as your iHome Finder developer partner, you're, you'll, there'll be access to those tools and that'll be something like what we do on IDX add-ons where it's about, um, $399 a year, if I remember correctly, per account. So if if you use us as your developer partner, it's free. So that's that's a really a good question. I have a question that uh, I'm, I'm new to this whole IDX thing. So what is the difference between IDX add-ons and Realty Candy and which one do I need to go with? That's a good question. So we we all work for Realty Candy. That's the name of our company. And we've made an, a platform called idxaddons.com that essentially extends the functionality of IDX Broker. Mm. So it's um, 
it's a little bit like saying, do I, should I go to Apple or should I go to the app store? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in my case, if I'm a digital marketing agency and I want to offer IBX websites to my clients, um, does it make a difference where I go? Because I'm looking on your IDX add-ons website and it's tailored to brokers or I think, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, realtors, individual realtors. So can I go one or the other? It's, it all goes to the same place. Okay. If, if you if you contact us through either one of those, you'll get the same person. Okay. Yeah. Great. So So yeah, in fact, the chat on both of those shows up on our back end in the same place. Okay. Yeah, they're they're okay. the same. Yeah. So we we would love to work with you. And so what we've tried to do is with the high level integration, the, here's a little sales pitch. I'll try to keep it short, but the the sales pitch is basically with that high level integration, we're trying to make it so marketing companies can reach out to all these uh realtors and these real estate agents and they have the tools that are white labeled and integrated into um high level they bring the MLS data, and uh, we don't we don't have a direct charge to you or to the client for that. Hmm. Yeah, so good question. Johnny's asking about that. So if you're already an iHome Finder client and have been for years, uh, so the I got to tell you, my wife gets after me. The one for iHome Finder is actually called idxapps.com. And the one for, for IDX Broker is called idxaddons.com. We try to get them as similar as they we could possibly do it to make it as confusing for us and other people. So so we try to get those names really close to mess people up. Yeah. So that might as a uh, thing is pretty accurate there. You know, I, I don't know exactly, actually, Johnny, how it works with iHome Finder. With IDX Broker, we actually have a page that we can set up. We send people to, and they can just tell IDX Broker they're going to start working with us. And IDX Broker doesn't change their payments or anything. They just slide them under our IDX Broker code, and they instantly get access to all our stuff. What I would recommend is that you shoot an email to iHome Finder. and. Uh, but we we're pretty new with iHome Finder to be honest with you. We don't have a whole bunch of clients with them. We've we're we've been doing this IDX broker thing for about 14 years now, but we've been working with iHome Finder for about one year. So I would just shoot an email to iHome Finder and just say, uh, we want to work with Realty Candy. I'm just gonna type it in here in the chat using. Should be something like that. Just send an email to them and they'll they should just switch you under our developer code over at iHome Finder. Yep. And and you instantly get access to all our stuff for free. Our system's just set up. Once they make that switch, you instantly get access to everything. So that was a good question. Jeff, is there anything else that we need to talk about here that you think would be valuable to these folks? Um no, I mean, I mean, from a, as a user of IDX add-ons and Realty Candy, it's been a, a really great experience. So, um, I appreciate it, James. Okay, well, I've, that's I've got some I've got some questions. Yeah, um, Mark. Hey, hey, um, <clears throat> um, I've been I've been following you since we've had since we had a Zoom call, you yeah. know, a little, uh, about a month ago. I do have uh, I've got a, a couple questions that I think were answered here, and I'll. I'll just answer them to make sure that I understand them, but I have some additional ones too. Like, as a, so, the my client, whether it be an an, an agent or or a broker, they're going to have if they're on IDX Broker or if they're on iFinder now, they can change over to you. So if they're on i if they're on iHome Finder, they're not going to have to switch to IDX Broker. Right. Um, they'll be able to do either one, and they can just switch you to being their their person yep. um yep. and in in some um more rare cases if that weren't the case then we could still supply 
the website, it would just come as an extra cost because right. that way, that way you're still getting, you're still getting paid because you're not getting paid from the affiliate fee. Correct. Right. So, so okay. Uh, let me, let me, you know, the truth is on that mark and I, I maybe shouldn't say this out loud because I know we're recording this, but you know, the truth is, is once you set up that, you, you duplicate, you buy one of those, you set up that website and you can go set it up for a million people if you really want, right. whether they use IDX or not. What we're, what we're doing with that one click thing is we're bringing all that data in and integrating it. We're building like a one, a one click integration, but some people you say, Oh, my mother-in-law is an agent and she doesn't even have any listings. I'm not, she doesn't want IDX. Well, I'll just spin up the site for her and I'll just use that design these guys gave me and then I'll just modify it for her. Yeah, you can totally do that. Got it. And um, I've, and I think the answer to this is yes as well. But if I wanted, if, if I wanted to, if I wanted to sell a solution to a single agent and let's just say that they're with like that, the shop that they're with is with IDX broker, right? Yeah. Um, I could connect with just that agent instead of without the overall uh, brokerage getting involved, correct? Yeah, so that's a great question. The answer to that is yes. And in fact, you'll you'll find a you'll find a situation where let's say Remax of Kansas City uses iHome Finder or they have mm -hmm. their own CRMs or their own IDX solution. And Becky Smith, who's an agent there, says, well, I want to use IDX Broker. Typically, it's it's super easy. She sends the paperwork to IDX Broker. They just need her broker to sign it. And she's the only one in her whole office that uses IDX Broker. Everybody else is using who knows what that the company provides for. That's what I do. Okay. Are you an example of that, Jeff? Yeah. So I, I, I'm at EXP Realty, and they give you KB Core and a website and lots mm -hmm. of stuff. And it doesn't, it, you know, it's part of what I pay for, what I pay them for. But um, I have been on um, IDX Broker, you know, for over a year. Um, so I actually have more people asking me about it that are on those other systems. And I, my broker just had to sign the data sharing agreement with um, IDX Broker. That, that's it. And how okay. painful is that? Um, it wasn't painful at all. Um, okay. I sent it in via our system and it was signed within three hours. Yeah, it's it's super common. That's that's like Jeff saying, I, I need you to sign this thing so I can order some new business cards, right? Yeah, yeah. typically the longest, it takes a little bit longer uh, if the MLS themselves are backed up because they have to do the final approval for it. Yeah, okay. So. Gotcha, awesome. Um, and then while I, was, while I was watching this, I wrote down a couple of things. Like the, I guess... The first one will answer the second one. What with with the website, right? You you sign them in, it loads up the the templated website. Are, and, and will I be able to go in there and edit these things once they're created? I won't have to be like, "Hey, uh, James, can can you fix this for me?" I'll be able to edit all that stuff. Yeah. Um, the one thing that came to my mind was, so like I'm in Middle Tennessee, right? Um, so most cities are like this though. And, and so like you have, I, the thing that crossed my mind was I didn't want just two surrounding okay. like secondary, like communities. I could create four or five yeah. if I wanted to. Right. Or a hundred. Right. Yeah. 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 Cause that's or the first thing that the agent's going to say is, oh, well, you know, I don't want to just say Nashville, Mount Juliet, Murfreesboro, you know, that's just, you know, just trying to think, trying to think of that. So I can edit all of that stuff. Yeah, so Mark, that's those are those are two closely related and really important questions. The first one is, can you edit the site completely? It's built in the GHL page builder, so now you just log in or you give your client access or your developer or whoever, and they go do whatever you want to do on it. So that's that's the first part. We that's why we're super excited about this. We had a, our own proprietary platform we built using a technology called Jamstack, which is totally next generation for real estate or for any website. And we decided to move off of that. We're building everything now for high level because of all the agencies. And one of the benefits of high level is that you guys know how to use high level. You can tie it into your web funnels, use the chat bots. Use, I mean, you got the whole um, ecosystem there. The second part is about those community pages. Well, on, on that right now, the way we have it set up, it's asking for two cities. 
like you're saying, what if I'm in downtown Nashville and I'm never going to get outside of the city center? I, you know, I want that to be something else. Well, we have another, it's one of our free apps that we actually use to build this. It's our one click community pages. So you can go build it out by subdivision. And the truth is, if you want to get even more granular, shoot us an a email or something. We'll show you how to build it. We've got some videos or one of our guys can go in there and knock one out for you. But you could do it on zip codes or you could, there's some other ways to build those probably, you know, if you wanted to manually do it. But the subdivision one will probably be added into the one click over time. We're just trying to eliminate a little confusion. And this is our MVP on this too. But you can add unlimited numbers of those within reason. I mean, you know, you can add a, hundreds or possibly even thousands, whatever limits high level an IDX broker put on it. Our system doesn't limit you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Just, and uh, just a, a, something that popped in my head that I thought would be cool um, would be to, to have those be able to, it's the best way to say this, you know, when you think of something and you can't really describe what you're thinking, <laughs> um, have the users um, experience uh, change, like different experience between two users, like you have user A and user B, and have be able to have custom fields, be able to change kind of what they're seeing. Um, the for the leads are visiting, are these visitors to the page? Is these that are, you're for, to the website? Like these are yeah. to the to the person's website and and i i just thought that that just popped in my head i have no idea how logistically that that could work but there's some agents that work like especially when you go more rural you uh, got agents that are working in, in over large areas and if you have one if you, you you've got a bot talking to the lead right and the lead's qualifying them and he's the bot's creating filling in all these custom values anyway and right. if that part when that person logged in if it could use those custom values to change the experience that the user sees on the website was just something that i thought would be cool um but again that's not well i actually had why, a meeting that's with... why I, that's why i'm calling you guys because that's not something that i know how to do you know i i had a meeting right before this with joe tran who's a uh big player in the in the high level space and that was one of the things that he was talking about and so we took some notes on what he suggested and it may be you know a few weeks and you know maybe two or three months down the road but what we're going to do is try to make some things so that what you're saying is if i'm looking at swimming pools now I might, what am I going to start seeing on the website is stuff that's targeting for swimming pools or if i'm looking for 55 plus communities we start to detect that and we start to sh show you know, basically what they're looking for, right? Kind of like Google does. Yeah, and, and that's and that's kind of in a in, in a you know in a search filter function as well. Um, I think where my head was going was more like, um, you know, you've got an area, you've got a big city, right? So you've got, let's say, you've got a, let's say you got a seventy-five to a hundred mile uh, metro area. You know, Oklahoma City. There, there, there you go. So you got like, you got Oklahoma city. Somebody's focused in on somebody's focused in on Norman. Right. So if they're focused in on Norman, Oklahoma, then we should, we should probably stop, probably stop showing them things when they go to the site instead of, you know, my, my, yeah. it was, it, stop was showing them those, admin. it was where those community pages were. Right. So if somebody's yeah. searching in Norman, then, you know, I want to show him five communities around the Norman area. So when he comes back to the site, that's what's there instead of, you know, the, the other side of Oklahoma City. Um, I, I don't know many. I don't know many towns in, in OKC, but I know Norman's one of them. Yep. Um, but you know what I mean? Where they're like the community oh. pages evolve to the user, because if that was done in mo in moments when it was created, one would think that you know that could happen too but again i don't know that's just an idea we have a we have a client that did something similar to that um hunt brothers realty where they have a city this is in florida and let's just say it's miami then inside of miami they've gotten that broken down into like 
Miami homes with swimming pools, Miami homes, 55 plus. And then they've got subdivisions, you know, the top 10 subdivisions in Miami and stuff like that. You That's a really good example because Miami's broken down into like 15 people communities. Like if they have like a hundred towns in that city, you know? So that's a really good example that town is. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. We I think there's more that we could do with that. I mean, there's uh, I mean, obviously it's much better if that's automated um in real time based on your searching preferences. But if that automation wasn't there, something you can leverage in high level is like a survey and then um use that information from the survey to create a saved link in IDX broker um and an automation that based on what they sent over in the uh, survey, you can email them um, basically a search that's tailored to them. It's a little bit, that's manual, but that's how I would do it right now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And and I think there's some ways to start. I mean, just when you guys are talking about this, it makes me think like, so what if they do search in Norman, Oklahoma? And and let's say that Mark's got his, his website, it might be valuable for us to get use a little AI there and go generate 10 community pages and say hey we've got some stuff here and now and now you add that to your website somehow that that's part of what's available for visitors the next visitor on your website too as as people look you create more and more content on your website mm -hmm. so hey anybody else have another question before we take off for today I really appreciate you guys joining us. We're gonna we're gonna we're recording this. We're gonna put it on our on our Facebook page there, and we appreciate each of you. When is, is this is this available now? Yeah, all this stuff's live right now. All of this stuff I, is and, live. And and iHome Finder integration is live right now, Johnny. So, thank you. Have a have a happy Thanksgiving, all of you Peace. from Canada. Um, you know, have a nice Thursday tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Okay, be good. Bye-bye.